Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can block certain AI as well as a chat GPT tool uh, on managed as well as majorly on the managed devices, right? And for the unmanaged devices also, we have certain options that we can leverage in order to block accessing those uh, tools where users won't be able to upload any corporate or business data or business document to those tools because in order to protect the business documents and business data, uh, definitely there are certain uh, capabilities that we can do on the user identities as well as on the devices. Those are managed by the Intune or in the context of device management platform, right? So now there are different questions why we wanted to block those tools because those are the AI tools and many organizations are trying to uh, educate people, educate users and trying to adopt AI on different uh, use cases, different industries, different scenarios. But still, uh, there are concerns why whether we should allow people to let access those AI tools, let access those tools for their work for productivity and are they going to impact on the business side as well so those are also another questions and maybe those are not answered fully because there are both sides pros and cons if people are using it for a good purpose for a good scenarios for uh, legitimate use cases then that's good but if people are using those tools and systems for the situations where they wanted to simply drop and letter or draft an email and they are trying to upload and document and asking uh, chat GPT or any AI tool saying that give me the drafted version of particular uh, file which I can send it to across different teams and they can understand from this file context what this file is going to be or whatever the content it has all that data is going to be visible in the content of, content of all those points right and maybe it's going to be something like people are just trying to upload files and get the summary of that whole file if the file is more than one page two page or maybe 10 pages they wanted to get a whole summary of that file they are uploading it and they are going to get a summary of that all the 10 pages in a short or maybe one or two pages and then they can copy the those pages or summary and then they can attach or send it to the respective group of people right so that is something even if people are uploading files that means the data is being fed and data is being exposed to those tools right and that is concern where if people are uploading those files data to the such tools then it the data could be project uh, related it could be client related it could be proprietary data which is really not uh, meant for such scenarios or such use cases but people are still uh, for convenience of their work, for easiness of their activities, they are trying to just get the things done uh, in proper way, right? So that's going to happen or maybe that is happening on different organizations. And that is why there are questions, concerns, whether we should allow it, we should not, whether we should block it and how we can do it, right? And there are many questions more than this and apart from this, right? And all those questions are answered. Some, some of those are unanswered because it totally depends on how organization are taking it right and how the organization is classifying the data that's very important when organization has a classification labeled of all those data types whether it is a confidential data whether it is public whether data is internally accessible and whether that data can be accessed and shared internally as well as externally and across the organization as well right if all those are the classifications are applied across that organization, definitely users won't be able to take the confidential data outside the organization or outside the systems, right? And all those are very important and necessary. Otherwise, these things keep coming up, keep happening. And there are questions again, if we are managing devices, if we are managing people, identities and systems and everything and applications, then why we can do this? We should be able to do this as well, right? This as in blocking certain applications, blocking such, such uh, AI tools where we don't want let people to access those applications and those systems. Instead, we will allow them to access maybe 
brand branded or licensed tools like copilot all right or those are the different systems we would be making the contract with those service providers and we will get the licenses and those licenses would be given to the people and people would be simply able to access those tools and systems right so those are the things where organizations are taking the actions and they are moving ahead with all the data actions and the systems and everything together because obviously there are different questions concerns and we really don't want to uh, happen those scenarios right so i'm going to create a conditional not conditional but the uh, configuration policy from intel side and that's going to be uh, showing you how you can block certain tools like chat gpt and any other ai tools right and those tools are simply be blocked on the devices when people are simply logging into a browser and entering the url like chatgpt.com or maybe uh, cloudia.ai something like that and then it is going to simply block that specific url because if it is not going to open that means users are not able to open it right or they cannot get into the applications and they cannot do any actions there at all right so that's what i'm going to show you uh, on the managed device context and on the unmanaged device context there are certain policies that we can do including conditional access policies as well as mcas uh, which is microsoft cloud app security right and then we have options using uh, defender portal as well where we would be able to uh, block those urls under the endpoint security or defender for endpoint secure defender for endpoint where uh, we would be able to put those URLs under the web content filtering where we would be blocking all those URLs and those won't be able to allow to access, right? Another URL is, or another method would be by creating a DLP policy, right? Where by creating that policy, we can simply uh, put or block all those URLs of that respective applications and we can uh, make sure they are not able to access any of those applications. The pretty straightforward option here would be either it should be on the uh, entity policy for the managed devices and for the unmanaged devices it is going to be pretty straightforward using conditional access policy right so that's going to be easy and pretty straightforward to test and everything as well and we don't want to let people access those and if we are blocking in first hand that means people won't be able to access it and they cannot simply uh, download or upload anything from there right so let's go ahead and jump on to the screen and i'll show you the how we can create policy and we can get the details more on it right all right so i'm on intune portal here and i'll go back but before going to that i wanted to show you another method that i had created similar policy long back and that policy is similar to block particular URL or maybe more than one URL at a time, right? So this is the policy, right? Uh, which is created for or created using settings catalog within Intune, uh, where I have given it as block list for Chrome and Edge browsers. So this is going to be a full block list. And even if I wanted to block any link or any URL, uh, be it Facebook, any social media platform or any websites, but this is going to be pretty cum cumbersome and this is going to be pretty a uh, time consuming process. So even if you wanted to update more than 100 or 1000 URLs, then you have to put all those URLs here or maybe you would create a simple Excel file and you would import that file here and all those URLs will show up here and then those URLs will be blocked by this policy, right? But to know and understand which URL is really been fishy or spammy or maybe a kind of AI tools which we are not going to allow any users to access and use that, right? That is going to be something which has or which needs to be done and happen by the policy, which is going to be always and continuously keep monitoring the device and user actions across the internet. When let's say I'm simply going into the browser and trying to search something like google.com. Now, 
the browser should automatically identify as well as the whole device which is managed by the Intune and in any other platform which should automatically analyze the website that I'm logging into or uh, getting into and then it should classify whether web that website is PC spammy or that website is relevant to the particular category like AI tools or any tools that is something we don't want to allow people to access and use right so there is another option which we can deploy across uh, Defender Suite, which is a smart screen policy, right? Uh, Windows Defender for smart screen, right? And that policy is going to do all of that stuff. So I'm going to create another video on that and that is going to show you, but uh, this is how it is going to be doing, right? And this method, which I'm showing you here, this is pretty manual and cumbersome and time consuming process where you need to identify those URLs and create a list or file and then you can import it and then do it and the another method that i'm going to show you this policy here this is also similar but in this also we have to get those respective urls and all those urls would be added into the uh, policy and then this is going to be uh, blocking all those urls right so let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Let me create policy. Select the platform Windows 10 and later, and then select the templates because this is going to be custom policy. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's say block AI and GPT tools. So you can give any name, which is more convenient and easy to understand and remember. Click next. So from here, we need to add that OMA URI, right? So this URI is going to be added. And then you can give it a name and description. So I'm going to put the same here. And here is that OMA URI, but I'm just going to copy it from another file. So here's that OMA URI that I have with me. So just copy this OMA URI. It starts from device vendor. Right and MSFT policy config Chrome and URL block list. Right. So now this is specifically for Chrome browser. Similarly, we can do it for the Edge browser as well. And then we can create this policy and deploy it. On the data type, we should select the string because we wanted to add multiple URLs at the same time. And <clears throat> We are targeting all those URLs as a string. So I have those URLs added and created here. So I'll simply select all of these URLs from here. And these are the random URLs that I have picked up, right? And even you can do your bit of research and find whichever, whichever you wanted to block and add it here. So I'm just selecting and putting those, those URLs here, right? To show you here in this context and you can go ahead and create this policy. So let's go ahead and save it. So now this policy is saved. You want, If you wanted to go ahead and edit or delete, you can simply do this from this small ellipsis and that's ready for our next step. Right, under scope tags, we can add scoping tags if you wanted to scope this particular group or devices. Under the assignments, we have options for a specific group, all users or all devices, context. And if you wanted to exclude something or any group, then we can add that as well. And the applicability rule, this is also one of the way where we wanted to make sure this policy is going to be applicable only on a certain group or certain devices capacity or maybe a specific, let's say, assign profile if the OS edition is particular starts from 11 or 10 or something or OS version starts from maybe a particular number right so starts from this number to this number then it is going to apply only to those right and if we are not looking or one don't want to do it we will simply uh, will not add it here and we can go ahead and click next.
and towards the end here we are good and ready here to go ahead and make sure we are gone through the policy and we can go ahead and create this policy right so let me copy this name for searching purpose and click create <clears throat> so perfect the policy is going to be created here uh, maybe it, it takes few seconds perfect this is created and this policy is created now i haven't assigned it to any group or any specific users <clears throat> right and here you can see that we have added OMA URI with the strings and string has all those URLs which we wanted to block, right? So it is going to block all those URLs and it is going to be stopping everything. Everything as in that respective URL won't be allowed to access on the device and it's not going to let anything uh, happen on the devices or end user experience. Definitely there would be end user experience which is which is something like people are not able to access those respective websites and people might be complaining about that with the respective team or a group of people but that's something that's the decision or that's something which organization does not want to happen because they don't want let people access unwanted tools and systems which may be exposing their data right and as i said the classification and other capabilities which are really important for people organizations to do the underground work on the data and then they can take the appropriate actions, right? Because if the data is classified as internal, private, or maybe confidential, then the data cannot move out of the organization at all on the managed devices. And if the same data is being accessed on unmanaged devices, then data should also be classified and data should be or should not be moving the applications which are fully managed as well as the the systems which are organizations managed those won't allow them to let's say uh, people are logging into the system which is a personal device and they're trying to download attachments maybe download confidential data confidential files right and because that file has the classification which is private or internal or confidential that means the same data cannot be downloaded and same data should not be able to download on the system and user cannot simply get in and they cannot share it across as well because that's the confidential and proprietary to the organization right so yeah that is all i wanted to show you and talk about this and as i said there are other ways around this as well by creating conditional access policies right and other methods like mcas for file uploads and blocking all of that stuff. And <clears throat> to simply prevent it, we have different op options as well, right? By doing all of that stuff, we can make sure people cannot upload any confidential data to the such tools and systems and they can prevent it or the organizations can prevent it, right? So yeah, that's all for this video I wanted to show and convey about this and hope you will understand and hope you will learn something out of this and let me know if you have done something around this and have you implemented and worked on this and don't forget to watch other videos around entry id microsoft 365 as well as azure and finops and don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel right and yeah that's all thanks for watching bye for now